Good afternoon, viewers of Seven News. This is the first day of October 2018. I believe you had a wonderful weekend after watching Seven News throughout the week. Today is another edition of your program, They Experts. Skills. Many Cameroonians are lacking. Many believe going to secondaries, high school, university, you have the skills. But that is not true. Skills is something we learn in order to become more professional. Today, we are talking of the importance of skills development in Cameroon. Many are experts who have knowledge or experience about skills development. With us this day is a young entrepreneur, a skills developer who has a name, Joel Betts, Genway. I get that name as if he's from China. But let me find out from him. Good afternoon, Joe Bet. Good afternoon, Mr. Bissell. So how are you today? I'm doing super awesome. Your name is Joe Bet <laughs> No. Are you from China? <laughs> <laughs> no. My name is Javne Joy Bet. Okay. Javne Joy Bet. So from the new, you know that I'm, I'm a typical Bansaw boy. Okay. So yeah, so that's that, that's a pronunciation. So I, I'm not from China. I'm from Bansaw. <laughs> from Bansaw. Okay. So who is... Uh, Jobet January. Well, Javne Jobet is a social entrepreneur, a corporate trainer, and a consultant, and a skills development expert. And in this capacity, I will talk mostly in that area. So I, I also run a center known as the Center for Entrepreneurship, Leadership, and Business Management Development Africa, and we provide skills and work with international agencies and uh, 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 governments to, to, to design skills programs for their various nations. And currently, we're in 18 African countries. And um, just about eight months ago, or so I was uh, appointed a member of the Global Youth Skill Innovation Council, which was formed this same time last year after the 72nd General Assembly of the United Nations. Okay. So we were selected eight young people across the world to, to to work with some experts and some world leaders to design the skills that young people need to thrive in the future workforce. So basically, that's Jav Nigerian in that direction. We are talking about uh, developing skills yeah. in Cameroon. Yeah. To your own knowledge or understanding, mm -hmm. what is skills? Uh, skills, I define skills in four directions. Know-how, competence, ability, and creating value. Okay. So I, I believe that if any person, and, and sorry, I'm mostly mentioning young people because mm -hmm. that, that is my major target of people I work with. So yeah. I believe that if any young person lacks the know-how, the competence, the ability, and cannot create value, you don't have skills. Okay. Yeah, so that is a definition of skills to me. Knowledge, ability, value, and competence. And competence. So what's the difference between value and competence? Well, with competence, you can create value. Now, I, I'm going to use you as an example. Maybe seven years employs you because you have the competence to be a journalist. Yeah. And you have the ability to create value from journalism by interviewing people the right way, the right way. and carrying out journalism with ethics and according to the professional standards laid down. Okay. So that's, you now have the competence, but competence oh. remains competence if it is, if it does not create value. value. Because value is what people pay for. Right. Value is, is what reduces pain. You know, if 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 uh, if, if 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 I have the pain of, of being thirsty, and this water is able to, to solve that issue of thirst, it means that's created value in my life. So, what are the steps, or how can one develop his skills? Well, we live in a generation whereby formal schooling is not enough. Okay. So, if anybody depends on just formal, because when I talk on skills, the first thing someone would think of is a uh, a university, a polytechnic, and so on. Yes, that, that, is, that is like the fundamentals. But we live in a fast-changing world, especially Africa. You know, when you look on, on the 10 top fastest green economies in the world, six are from Africa. So it means the African marketplace is growing at a faster pace. And if any person depends just on formal education, you won't acquire skills. Because even our education system in Cameroon and most African countries is a cake. And if it is not redefined, many young people will not be able to fit in the future workforce. Let me surprise you something. Research proves that by 2030, 800 million young people will not have the skills to future in the future workforce. That's just by 2030. Mm -hmm. 8 million young people. So it means the current education system is not providing what we need. Let's come back to the African continent. 
it is said that by the World Bank that between 8 million and 10 million unskilled young, young people, people, unskilled, remember yeah. that, enter the labor market every year. 8 million. Yeah. Come back to the education system. So the first step is that we need young people and people to look beyond the education system put in place. You need to be a lifelong learner. You need to be somebody who is hungry for knowledge, mm. hungry for skills, hungry for know-how. That's the first step. Be a lifelong learner. And secondly, you need to move from being just somebody who wants to know the what. Yeah. Our education system teaches about the what, the what, the what. But we now need programs that teach you how and show you how. And that's where centers like my coming and other partner organizations work with. So we are moving from teaching just the what, but helping young people to teach them the how and show them how to do it. That's not a skill. Remember I said skill is know-how, yeah. ability competence and creating value mm. so somebody who knows how to do something can create value with a skill so be, be a lifelong learner and be somebody who is hungry to know how to do something and the next thing is mentorship and i'll break it down to apprenticeship you know we live in a culture in coming whereby you know in the olden days or never say olden days a few years back when um you are done with high school and your mom can't see you through university or send you to, to a better job or something they'll also go learn how to be a carpenter, carpenter yeah. learn how to be a barber that is very important because the, the carpenter man will, will not go and take a book and um, uh, a screen and teach you that oh when you want to cut um, yeah a wood a, a wood this is what you do no he's teaching you you, you are doing it at practical point, yeah practical that's where that's where mentorship comes in so if i want to be an exceptional journalist and I, I don't just need to go and read journalism in school i need to get mr Bissell to mentor me on a daily basis how to become a great journalist mm -hmm. and mentors don't just mentor you at home or in a classroom what happens mr Bissell is going to cover an event because we aim my mentee i'm going to uh to the presidency or to the private office to cover an event come see how it's done yeah, yeah. you're not saying come and hear come and listen how it's done come and come see, see how, how it is, is done yeah lifelong learning be hungry to know how and get a mentor so you're talking of uh, lifelong learning yeah and you mentioned the fact that by 2030 mm. most young people will be yes. out of the job market yeah. you as a professional what do you advise the youths to do at this point in time now young people need to be knowledgeable don't just choose a career research about the career I can assure you that in five years from now, there are some jobs that will be wiped out of the surface of the earth. Like? For example, let, let me take a basic example, like um, the translators. There are apps now that are doing very good translation. And with the great of artificial intelligence, they will be, with your telephone, as I'm speaking, it's automatically translating in French or yeah. in another language. It's very possible. Yeah, that's it's, true. it's already in China. You see? And, and, there, and there are so many other jobs. But you need to study an industry and see what is lacking yeah. and then look at the future that's where foresight is very important have a foresight of what is, what's going to happen 30 years from now 10 years from now so you now know okay i, I need to tilt this way when you go like to the west uh i, I was in the u.s three months uh, for three months uh, and there's something i observe critically in the area of skills there are people who are tilting you see somebody that um five years ago he was totally doing something different mm -hmm. When you ask what they do now, say, oh, five years ago I was this, but now this is what I'm doing. You ask why. He's going to give you statistics. Okay. But he tell you that, hey, the way the economy is running, the way the industry is changing, if I stay here, I won't have a job five years from now. Okay. What happens? You become a lifelong learner. You study. You don't just need to go to the university to take a full program. There are online courses. There are institutions giving short programs. You, you, you so the first step is try to have a foresight of the future if you're in the finance industry you are in the marketing industry you you are in the production industry the manufacturing industry you need to look at it like the manufacturing industry there are several jobs that will wipe out just two three years from now because robots are being produced on a single day in thousands of numbers all right you see so foresight is very important and that's where experts like us now need to we, we now talk with international agencies and governments and we try to recommend what should be done how the education system should be tilted yeah. to, 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 to help young people to thrive in the next 30 years or 20 years we are talking of skills development in Cameroon yeah. 
Do you think some of the professional schools we have in our country today are helping people to develop their skills? Well, I would not totally say no, mm -hmm. but they are doing their best. <laughs> okay. But I, I think more still need to be done. But the point is that for skills reformation to be effective, it takes the public sector and the, the private, private sector. But sadly, sadly to say, not much is done from the public sector. Mm -hmm. So the private sector seems to, you know, even if, when you run like a higher institution, you know, the ministry gives a curriculum, like the HND curriculum, a degree curriculum. So yeah. there's really not much, except a proprietor that has foresight, that goes an extra mile. There, there are some universities I, I work with here as visiting lecturers, and, and, when, and, and they have taken that special attention to take their young people further. Yeah. You see, by providing these employability skills. For example, there are basic fundamental skills that every graduate should have. Now, our education system teach young people what to think. But for us to thrive in this country, we need a system that teach young people how to think, not what to think. Okay, thank you, Jobet, for that uh, ex brilliant uh, explanation. Before I get back to you, let's just get to this report. Viewers of Seven News Television, let's watch this report by Brice Gozok, talking about coffee. Cafetière, verre tendu et le précieux sésame peut être déversé dans le contenant afin de faciliter la consommation de cette boisson. Un procédé de dégustation entré petit à petit dans les habitudes alimentaires de nombreux usagers qui ont fait du rendez-vous mensuel initié par le conseil interprofessionnel du cacao et du café CICC dans cette cour principale du ministère du commerce une véritable tradition. Rituel qui a très probablement contribué au bon exponentiel de consommation de ce produit avec plus de 3700 tonnes de café transformées lors de la campagne 2015-2016 contre moins de 450 tonnes en 2014-2015 faisant bien des variétés Arabica et Robusta produites par le Cameroun une sorte d'attraction pour les multiples papilles gustatives de certains inconditionnés de ce liquide. On ressent sur le ventre, on ressent sur les habitudes qu'on retrouve, les mêmes gens qui reviennent. Ça veut dire qu'eux déjà véhiculent un bon message au quartier. Un saut vertigineux dans la consommation locale, mais aussi dans les exportations, avec plus de 27 000 tonnes, selon l'Office national, tout aussi en charge de la filière, qui indique par ailleurs que les deux variétés cultivées au Cameroun se sont nettement améliorées tant en quantité qu'en qualité, avec 10% d'augmentation en volume contrôlé pour ce qui est du Robusta et environ 41% de volume total contrôlé de café Arabica, donnant bien du crédit et cette aura que garde encore le café camerounais sur le marché international. Le camerounais, avant, ne connaissait vraiment pas euh, qu'il produisait un produit de bonne qualité. Euh, Aujourd'hui, nous sommes surpris de voir que beaucoup viennent y boire, ils apprécient et il y a l'affluence. Des saveurs et un goût unique qui, combinés à une consommation nationale en pleine croissance, pourraient à nouveau faire les beaux jours de l'agriculture partant de l'économie camerounaise, comme ce fut le cas dans les années 70, année de gloire du café camerounais. Thanks very much, Brice Kozok, for that excellent report talking about Cameroonian coffee. Viewers of 7 News Television, if you're just switching on your television set, this is your program, The Experts. Today, we are talking of the importance of skill development in Cameroon. With us is an expert, a young, talented entrepreneur, He's no other person than Genui Jobet, who is a skilled developer. Mr. Jobet, have you ever in your life tasted coffee made of Cameroon or yes. tea made of Cameroon? Yeah. yeah. So, how did you find it? I, I think it, it, it was excellent. So I think it was in, in Baminda. Um, mm -hmm. There's a nice, beautiful coffee shop uh, in Commercial Avenue. So, yeah. 
some long time friends we got met up in commercial avenue say hey, let's look for a coffee shop so when we were turning around we saw it and it was so nice and the coffee was good so yeah and, and we really loved the idea of you know setting up a beautiful coffee shop where people can just come sit chat and drink cameroon coffee and do you think uh, there are prospects that uh, cameroon coffee might become very international yes there are agriculture is the future in short it's the present and the future and, and i call it a new oil yeah. So it, it has potentials. What what it just need are, are just right policies and the right people to manage it to grow. You see, and that's where skills still, still come from. Oh, right. So if, if if the right people are, are not there to process it right, and the right people are not there to project it to the world the right way, we are going to have issues. But I believe that with the growth of the agricultural sector and some investment being made even by the government and international agencies, there are a lot of hopes. We are talking of the importance of de developing skills in Cameroon. You mm. as a specialist or an expert, what are the fundamentals of skills? Well, the, the fundamentals of skills still rotate around what can you create. Because skills is about creating, it's creating. know how. Yeah. So if, if, if you can't create, you don't have a skill. So yeah. the, the fundamentals of skills rotate around the problem. So if you create, you can solve a problem, you can solve a pain point. Mm. Because we live in a society where people are going through pain mm -hmm. and if you can solve that pain with a skill you're able to make money that's, that's entrepreneurship yeah. entrepreneurs solve pain points yeah. so find a skill solve a problem and create some value in, in the society is it one of the reasons why when people are looking for jobs they always ask what are your skills yes the first thing is what can you do mm -hmm. because nobody's interested at what do you know what can you do okay you see and let me give you an example that if Seven News today launches a position that they need a marketer, yeah. what I know is that Seven News has the problem of marketing. Mm -hmm. So any job seeker out there should design a CV that is skillful that is coming to solve the problem. The problem. So we need CVs that are solution oriented and skillful. Mm -hmm. We don't just need a CV that you have a BS in marketing, you have this, this, that. That's not enough. Okay. But can you solve the problem in the marketing department that Seven News is facing? All right. That's where skills comes in. So people recruit now on skills. So if com any company is facing any problem, they need a skillful person to solve that particular problem. And any company that exists wants to increase sales, increase productivity, and increase profit. And the only person that can make these three things happen is somebody who is skillful and competent. Can uh, seminars attendance or meeting attendance help develop one's skills? Definitely. I do a lot of seminars and conferences and I speak in a lot of them. I speak in average 200 events and seminars across the continent. Okay. You see, and a lot has happened in, in that area. But the point now is in the area of how is the trainer delivering the seminar, the seminar. or the event. All right. That's where it happens because the, 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 uh, although the trainees or the participants have a role to play, but the trainers have an issue mm -hmm. because and that's one thing that we have been talking about with some with some good trainers around because there are a lot of shallow trainers around somebody just get up and say since you can talk well you can train well which yeah. is, there are some training tools there are training fundamentals there are no house on how to train but we have a lot of trainers who just train the what but we need trainers that will take participants to mm -hmm. teach them how mm -hmm. and show them how yeah. and ensure that they do it that's the real training because hope is hopeless without action that's so no, no matter how you train and nothing is happening in the life of participants, then there's something wrong with their training method. So training has shaped a lot of lives. Seminars have shaped a lot of lives if, you, if people are doing it right. And the participants need to come with a mindset that I need to make this happen. Unfortunately, a lot of participants attend trainers in the place of their comfort zone. And that's a killing zone. But if you're coming for a seminar and you're leaving that seminar and you go and nothing changes, also check yourself. It means yeah. you just came, listened, took pictures, and shared on Facebook how you're attending <laughs> seminars, and nothing is happening in your life. You see? Yeah. So, the trainers, there's a lot that needs to be done from the part of the trainers, and the participants need to be prepared on the post outcomes of the trainings. Do you in any way have uh, meetings among the trainers to discuss on how to develop your skills? Yes, we, we have not had former ones, but as, uh, as a consultant, I, I have had personal trainers who have come to me for coaching sessions on how to train better. Okay. Yes, but 
uh, maybe in, 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 in a month ahead, we'll organize a formal training program, a train the trainer program on how to provide skills uh, uh, development training programs. Mr. Jobet, you are a specialist and entrepreneur. Where did you get your own training to become this skillful? Well, my training came in a very special way. Mm -hmm. um, first, I, I was reading a book, I think in 2012, and where I stumbled on the concept of lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. And it, it turned me into a seeker. Because if, if you need to be a specialist and an expert, you need to pay the price. Yeah, that's there true. is a price. There is a price. You know, and after I read that book, between 2013 and 2017, around August, I used to sleep just three hours in 24 hours. What I was, was I doing? I was studying, making sure that I become the best in my area of expertise. Okay. So I paid the price for years to become the best. After that, I had a mentor. I had mentors and role models in the training industry. <clears throat> I mean people that are redefining the training industry. People I look up to and I make calls and I spend time on the internet to video calls and they guide me on training methods. I made sure I did that and I made sure I got certified. You know, I made sure I, I wrote exams and I got certified by international organizations in the US and in the UK to become a trainer. So I had to go through these processes because I didn't just want to be a shallow trainer. I wanted to be an expert that can be sought after and can be paid. I wanted yeah. to be a go-to person in the area of skills development. So I went through all the processes. You went through the pains, the challenges, and you became certified. So what were your major challenges? Well, you, you know, the training, the training industry, the corporate training industry, consultancy industry, especially in Cameroon and Central Africa, is still very young. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it tends to be very difficult. Sometimes most of our partners and clients that we have in the corporate consulting are mostly in East Africa and in West Africa. So one of the challenges was, first of all, having somebody you can look up to okay. in the country, you know, that can mentor you to become a full fledged I, I don't mean people who have, you know, some that people have their permanent jobs and then this public, public speakers. I, mean, I, I needed people that breathe and talk and live in training make a living out of training that's what i wanted yeah. so i didn't really have that person i could look up to within the country so it one of the many challenge i had so i had to go on the internet or on linkedin and connect with people and get mentors and role models and people who can partner and, and make me better and the second challenge now you know is getting now people to understand that they need people like us mm. you know getting companies to in cameroon you know getting to understand that hey, you need a corporate consultant to design your processes to make you innovative and to increase your productivity and sales talent development in your company and all the services that we provide can uh, obtaining a particular degree make one really skillful in life it still depends on how the degree was delivered meaning meaning <laughs> how the training was done uh -huh. so the, the end result is not the certificate the end result is what can you do so it that's why there are mbas you know um the index that came out just about two weeks ago on top um respected mba school around the world you know the, one of the major things that they were looking at in that index was how the mba program is delivered the in the schools that's yeah. why you, you, you see the harvard the northwestern the stanford universities that are well respected across the world you see so it is on the how it is delivered now let me give you a basic example i run a recruitment firm I, I, we can just career management firm, or we help companies recruit. And sometimes, someone just come to us and say, we need a marketer. Yeah. And you see somebody who has a first degree in marketing. Yeah. And the person will come and ask the person to design a marketing plan right. for, for serving news. So we're looking at you and like, what is that? Yeah. So yeah. what happens? How the training was delivered. So there are still schools that are breaking that, that barrier on delivering training the right way delivering the courses the right way that can be done you know for example there are still schools nowadays that have not added digital marketing that's in, true in, in, into that uh, marketing curriculum come on in the next two years the same marketing that i trained i used to teach H and D levels and degree in marketing that i trained in 2015 if those students are seizing those same skills right now they will not compete <laughs> <laughs> people are making money online now. People are selling online. The right target market is online. Yeah. So it, you see, it still depends on how was the degree delivered? How was the three years and the two years spent in school? What was the school doing? How were they doing it? So the key word is how, not what you know. What you know. How was it done? 
Is it all because of the fact that most schools today do more of theory than practicals? I think so. Mm -hmm. Because they're still focusing on the... Remember I told you that for complete skills to be transferred, you need to teach somebody the what, that's the theory. The theory. And then you teach the person how, how. and then you show the person how to do it. Mm -hmm. That's why I respect school. There are some schools that, after, this, after the program, they send... Um, there are students like for six days, a school in Douala, I won't call the name, I'm not here to, yeah. to, to, to do advertisement. After they do, af af after they do their training and all of that, they send the students on a paid internship. Okay. Now when the school is paying for you to go, to, to to go for internship. Right. That's now, they teach you what in school, they make sure that they teach you how and they show you how, how to do it. So now when you're leaving the school, you should not stay, the employment gap between school and the job market should not be too too large. Somebody leaves school 2018. Now it's just looking for a job. So looking for a job itself is a job. <laughs> you see? So it, it is that's an unpaid job, you know that. <laughs> so it, it, it is really, really um, a, a serious situation. And it baffles me because we live in a country and a continent whereby there are several problems and people are still unemployed. Mm -hmm. So you see, there is a gap, there's something wrong somewhere. Because there are problems means there is hope. Yeah. Because people make money from solving problems. Okay. So if the right training programs are being made and young people go out to solve problems, they will get employed, make money and live a good life. Hope they say it's a good breakfast but a bad supper. Yo, when we just started, you make mention of the fact that I think six of the best economists are from Africa. Yeah. But yet, the continent remains still poor as it is. Mm -hmm. So what is really the problem? Now, I always give a simple scenario that if you take cocoa and export to Switzerland for processing, mm -hmm. you're not only exporting the raw materials, you're exporting jobs. Yeah, that's true. You're exporting processing jobs, you're yeah. exporting manufacturing jobs. You see? So that is part of the problem. And as, as people have been saying, as some have been saying, aid will not develop Africa. That's yeah, true. We need business partnerships. We need collaboration. That's how we develop Africa. And what about industrialization? Because if the Western world, uh, Western world is developing, it's because they're industrialized as well. Here's the good news. Luckily, we are breaking past the industrialization age. We're okay. into the tech age. Yeah. And the good news is that the African young people are catching this vision. But we need more to be done. We need more universities that can provide tech training programs. You see? And there is a lot that can happen if young people can harness the power of technology. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, Mr. Ubed, thanks very much. Let's just follow this other report by Carol Tepa, who is talking about professional training. Carol Tepa, let me get what you have for us. Avoir un emploi décent au Cameroun devient de plus en plus difficile de nos jours. La majorité des jeunes nantis de diplôme se retrouvent à évoluer dans le secteur informel ou encore exercent dans des entreprises privées avec à la clé des mois d'aérés de salaire. Au regard de ces constats, les jeunes pouleurs optent pour des formations rapides afin d'être autonomes financièrement. Pour l'instant, nous sommes encore dans la phase théorique et il est question de faire l'hébergement, la restauration, euh, la cuisine et la, 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 la technologie des restaurants. J'ai choisi de faire esthétique parce que déjà, l'esthétique c'est déjà là du beau et moi j'aime bien le beau et j'ai voulu valoriser ce métier qui est euh, dans la société un peu comme un métier de, des gens qui ont, qui ont raté leur vie et qu'on sort. Ils sont donc 100 jeunes pour une première phase qui bénéficient depuis le mois de février d'une formation de 12 mois en couture, plomberie, hôtellerie, restauration, activité agro-pastorale. C'est dans le cadre du projet d'apprentissage et d'insertion socio-professionnelle des jeunes de l'arrondissement de Yaoundé 7, projet PAS 7. Je vais vous donner quelques chiffres. Je voudrais que vous sachiez que 60% des, des populations, de la population de Cameroun, a entre 17 et 30 ans. Donc euh, le chômage des jeunes, vous avez vu les chiffres, sont absolument effarant. C'est un véritable malheur social. Et je pense que chacun à son niveau doit pouvoir trouver la contribution à apporter. 
L'initiative est ainsi supervisée par l'honorable Jean-Simon Angola, député à l'Assemblée nationale, en partenariat avec des institutions publiques et privées. Cette initiative qui se veut un levier pour contribuer à la qualification des jeunes dans un environnement où l'offre d'emploi se fait de plus en plus compétitive, une véritable manne qui tombe du ciel à l'égard de ces jeunes qui n'auront rien à débourser sur le plan financier. Thanks very much, Carol Tepa, for that wonderful report you just made concerning professional training for people who are leaving professional schools. We all know that for us to be happy, we need to eat good foods. And good foods must come from people who have that training. That is why most hotels, restaurants are looking for the professional touch in order to have customers. Viewers of Seven News Television, this is your program, The Experts. Today, we are talking about the importance of skills developing in Cameroon. With us is an entrepreneur skill developing specialist, Mr. Genuil Jobet. Mr. Jobet, you just followed that report by Carol Tepa talking about restoration and restaurant in Cameroon, yeah. professional training. How good is our professional schools when it comes to restoration? Um, I think some are very good. Okay. And I, I, I had an experience while I was in Washington, a colleague of mine, she has worked with me, but she's not in DC. She got a contract. I'm not going to go the name of the hotel, okay. but they own hotels like in 30 something countries now across the world. So it's like a hotel brand across the world. And they gave her a simple tax. Find out why in Africa we get employees who claim to have left schools that train them on hotel management Management. and restoration but they can't perform the jobs the way we want that's our target so she has (laughs) moved from south africa to tanzania and and, and to gabon and all of that just to find out why why yeah so it goes to how was the training delivered delivered, the schools are there you see but maybe the standards on how the training was delivered are deficient yeah so that's very important on who is training don't just get a lecturer for your school or a trainer for your school, but get somebody who will provide the right training for your trainees. Because now, for example, if you go to a popular hotel and the, the person at the receptionist claims to have left a hotel management school, you should see that in the person. Yeah, from how the person welcomes you, from how the person serves you, why the person listens to your complaints. But sometimes when you go to some hotels, you are like, man, <laughs> what happened? The way they talk to you. Meanwhile, the only reason they are there at that desk is because you are a customer, you come to that hotel. Yeah. You see? So there, there are always some, some discrepancies, but a lot is changing. A lot is changing. With the, the gospel of skills that we keep preaching, preaching and, yeah. and, 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 and with you know, ministries and of vocational training and higher education keep doing their best to ensure that these schools are meeting the standards laid in place. And hopefully, in the long run, a lot is going to change. Why? Because a lot of proprietors and entrepreneurs and other businesses are seeing that some workers are killing their businesses. And if a worker does not change to be professional, to behave the right way, you are going to lose your job. Remember, there are 8 more million young people waiting for that same job. And uh, one thing I wish to ask from you, don't you think some of this um, uh, behaviors that are not welcoming is because some of the proprietors themselves are behaving like a uh, overlord or a boss who is above God. The reason why some of these workers become very deviant in their behaviors. Yeah. Well, it is true. And remember I said that for certain things to happen, there should, there should be a good partnership between the public sector and the private sector. Yeah. Because if these proprietors and these business owners act like lords, and the ministries in place, maybe the Ministry of Small and Medium Sized Enterprises and Social Economy and the Handicraft that regulates some of these businesses, maybe don't really enforce 
some of these important roles because you know no matter how, if you own a business there are business policies, policies there yeah. are business roles you need to pay a staff according to a particular salary you need to treat them the right way the environment needs to be favorable for them to work and if the public sector does not play their role to ensure that these owners of businesses respect these laws they are going to maltreat um, um, their employees and if they, if they continue to be weak institutions, maybe as an employee, you go report a business owner that he or she is not treating you well, and the business owner go and bribes the person you reported to. If the weak institution is there, there's always going to be that act. So we still need a lot of work from the public sector so that the private sector can thrive. Yeah, because you made mentions of over 8 million young Cameroonians looking for a job. And with such mentality, some bosses have tend to match it to their workers yeah. because they know after all if you go some other person will come and i'll yeah. keep on matching them definitely so what do you think uh, you always you've talked about the public mm -hmm. sector and the private sector yeah. working together mm -hmm. and your main mention of the deficiency of the quality of training given to the uh, to the people or the students yeah. and uh, mr jubit let me find out something from you is it because the schools today or the proprietors are interested in just the money that people are bringing in that is why they are not giving the quality training they deserve to give the people sadly i would say yes why because i have worked with proprietors that have passion for education mm -hmm. and i've seen how they go the extra mile to ensure that their graduates are different in the job market mm -hmm. in this same country same as i work with proprietors that all they care about is her fees been paid. Mm -hmm. The boss are gone get money. You see, mm -hmm. so sadly, some majority of them open schools because they think the education sector has a lot of money. But some people who open schools because they are passionate about the education system are doing a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So there is that disparity. But it still go back to the public sector. You see, let them do the right work. You see, if mm. you mention higher education, ensure that the right universities have the right structures, recruit the right lecturers, have the right didactic materials, follow the right curriculum, and go the extra mile to deliver the right young people we need. This is very important because the group, the strength of every economy lies on the workforce. Mm -hmm. A skillful workforce in any country will breath a strong economy. That's true. That's why in Africa, I always say that the youthful population we have is either a ticking time bomb or a gold mine. Mm -hmm. We can turn into a gold mine by empowering these young people with the right skills or we can watch them and turn them into a ticking time bomb. And someday, not someday, it's going to explode. <laughs> That sounds interesting. Some day it's going to explode. Yes, it's going to explode. <laughs> but I pray that it should not explode <laughs> now. Let it come in 2095. Yeah, but, but, but the good news is that, you know, <laughs> amazing young people. Now, I've met with amazing young people that are doing exceptional work okay. in the area of education and skills development. And the kind of work they are putting in, I'm very hopeful that that time bomb will not be anytime soon. Let it not be anytime <laughs> soon. All right, so. Let's talk about a little bit about skills and career development. Yeah. How can one skills help him to develop his career? You know, there is no career without skills. Yeah. There's something I call career growth barriers. Career growth barriers. Yes. Okay. And apart from the person, apart from attitude, poor commitment, not having focus. Some of those are some things that young people lack that are barriers to their success. But the major barrier is skills. All right. If you have the right skills, you can break through any career group barriers. Mm -hmm. Because career revolves around skills. Skills, yeah. If you want to achieve, let's say, a young person is sitting someday, maybe in the University of Boya or another university, and keeps admiring Richard Quest of CNN. CNN yeah. Richard Quest means business. I remember the guy how he reports on business, how he talks to business tycoons around the world. But he's not acquiring the skills to become an efficient and effective journalist. Then that career is just a dream. Mm -hmm. Every career is a wish and a dream without the right skills. So if you have any career vision or any career dream, the backbone of that dream is the skills. That's why I always ask young people to do two key things. Write down 
your career dream. Mm -hmm. Point two, identify the top five skills you need, need to make this dream happen. Okay. If you do this, then the next thing is just have the right attitude, be ready to put in the hard work, and you're going to achieve the dream. Okay, somebody who is uh, who graduates from a medical school or mm -hmm. a nursing school, yeah. you as a specialist, if the person is looking for a job and needs a CV, mm -hmm. and uh, he needs to put something on his skills, yeah. what are the five points you think the person should put in order to win? Great employee. Now, the first thing that any employer looks for is a game changer. All right. If my company today is recruiting for anybody in any field, I need somebody who will take my company to the next level. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something called a summary statement in every CV. Yeah. Now, many young people always indicate that I'm looking for a job that will challenge me. I'm looking for a job that will give me new opportunities. Yeah. I'm not looking for that kind of an employee. Okay. But I'll look for an employee, somebody who will tell me that I'm looking for a company that I'm going to help contribute my quarter to yeah. change the growth of that company with my skills. Yeah. That somebody's going to go far. Yeah. So if you are designing a CV, remember I said that any organization that announces a position means they have a problem. A problem, that's true. So design your CV as a solution to that problem. Don't just write a CV. That's why I see young people, somebody has a CV since 2010, so he's doing it today. <laughs> Any young person who is a job seeker and has just only five CVs, you are not doing anything. You need to tailor each CV according to the position. the position. Design that CV to solve that problem. And when an employer or a recruiter is looking at a CV, they are looking for one, somebody who takes initiative. Mm -hmm. That's why I always advise that if you are a job seeker, don't just be looking for a job. Look for somewhere to internship or look for somewhere to volunteer. volunteer. If I pick a CV, I do a lot of recruitment. I have a recruitment firm. And a lot of companies contact me to recruit. That's why if you, if you look at the number of jobs that go on TV, on radio, it has greatly reduced. Why? Because of recruitment firms like us. Mm -hmm. They just come to us and say, oh, Joybert, I need two accountants, two managers in three days. Pay my money and I get it done. Yeah. I get my team on it. Now, when we go to the database and get all the thousands of CVs, we are looking for people who go change the game of that company. The company. So, when I'm looking for a CV, I want to see if the first thing is initiative. If you left school in 2015 and you're looking for a job now, I'm very interested to see what you are doing between 2015 yeah. and 2018. Yeah, that's true. If you are doing nothing, you are a reactive person. You sit. You do ABC syndrome. You abuse, you blame, and you complain. Yeah. That means you go to that same company and do the same thing. But if between 2.15 and 2.18, you indicate that, okay, I volunteered here for two months, I did this for three months, I was here for four months, I did computer projects like this, it paints me that you're a proactive person. Yeah. And any company needs a proactive person. So when I pick your CV, I want to see that first, even before skills. Because the person is important before the skills. Before the skills so if true. I see you have, you, you take initiative, you are proactive. If I look at, oh, what can she do? What can he do? Does he or she has the right skills to do this? I have recruited employees for companies that don't have the right skills, but they have the attitude. The attitude. They have the, they are proactive. Anybody who is proactive can learn any skill at any time. Yeah. Or anything called skills is learnable, please. People should know that. You are not born with skills. Anything called a skill is learnable. Yeah. If you see anybody who is a public speaker, who is a trainer, who is a good journalist, a marketer, he or she learns all of these things. And if you want to be like that person, go and learn it. Yeah. Yeah. You talk of volunteerism, but that is not something common in Cameroon. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, people believe uh, as a volunteer, you just go and waste your waste time, your time and all like. Mm -hmm. And you as a specialist. I know in other countries, volunteers are being given something like a stipend to pay their transportation, but that's not, it's hardly done in Cameroon. Well, I, I wouldn't say it's hardly done. Mm -hmm. Many people, many companies do it. Because, yeah. But they won't just tell you. It's not budgeted for in most, in, in most uh, financial statements. Mm -hmm. It's not budgeted for. But some do budget. But if you're coming for a volunteering position, it is their discretion. Voluntary means you are coming to serve at no pay. Yeah, no pay, yeah. And you have particular objectives. While you are contributing your quarter to that company, 
you are also getting the skills, the skills to forge ahead with your career. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Jobet, thanks very much. Viewers of Seven News Television, let's follow sports by Aman Tepono talking about golf. What is it all about? Tepono Aman, let's have it. Reconnaissance du parcours après le lancement officiel de la 8e édition de l'Open International de Golf du Cameroun au Golf Club de Yaoundé. Professionnels et amateurs révisent leur gamme en attendant le jour J. Pour le président de la Fédération Camerounaise de Golf, Yves Martin Aranda Asiga, tout est fin prêt pour que les hostilités puissent démarrer effectivement. En tant que hôte de la compétition, il répond à toutes les sollicitations. Le principe de ce genre d'édition, c'est d'être conforme aux autres éditions. Les particularités doivent être des petites touches qui ne doivent pas se voir, mais qui doivent améliorer la compétition dans son ensemble. Donc la première grande innovation à la grande fierté, c'est l'ouverture par le ministre des Sports et d'Éducation Physique, M. Ismaël Bidonpat, qui nous a fait l'insigne honneur de, de, de venir ce dimanche à 13h ouvrir la compétition. L'œil de la caméra de Seven News aperçoit au loin celui qui aura longtemps porté l'étendard du golf professionnel camerounais. Désiré Bella est de la partie avec cette année des ambitions revues à la hausse. Je me suis bien préparé, je n'ai pas de blessure, je suis bien mentalement. Et parlons de façon générale, mes, mes collègues et moi, ils sont, nous tous on est prêts. Parmi nous, il n'y a pas de blessés. Euh, L'état d'esprit est correct, donc euh, voilà, on est prêt pour aborder la compétition, malgré la diversité qui est rude. Le parcours, quant à lui, affiche déjà fière allure et n'attend plus que les compétiteurs qui ne vont pas se faire prier pour l'arpenter le moment venu. Euh, il y a quelques années, le, le, toute la charge était reposée sur euh, moi seul. Aujourd'hui, on est cinq ou six qui peuvent, qui peuvent vraiment aller chercher le titre. Euh, donc comme j'ai dit tantôt, on est prêt. Les Kenyans qui arrivent, on les connaît parce qu'on fait le tour africain avec eux. Donc euh, là, je pense qu'on a l'avantage parce qu'on joue chez nous, devant notre public, devant nos dirigeants. Euh, le ministre était là, il nous a donné son mot d'encouragement. Euh, on va essayer de suivre l'exemple des Lions et notables. On verra ce que ça va donner samedi. Le Cameroun est tenant du titre. Une véritable performance pour les nôtres dans un sport qui en réalité n'est pas encore véritablement rentré dans les habitudes de nos sportifs. Mais si on y croit Dieu comme fait, on peut remettre ça cette année. Thanks very much, Amang Tepono, for that report on golf in Cameroon. Viewers of Seven News Television, we are gradually coming to the end of this program, The Expert. Today, we are talking on the importance of skills developing in Cameroon. With us is an expert, a young entrepreneur, Mr. Jobet Genuine. Mr. Jobet. We are talking about skills developing in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. What are the tools to develop our skills? Well, in, 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 in skills development, there's a lot to do with the soft tools, let me call it like that. Okay. And, and the hard tools may come from the part of the trainer or the school or the institution carrying out the training. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's very important to start with the person that makes the training. Mm -hmm. First of all, you need to start with you need to know what you want. Not. That's why we talked about foresight. You need to know where you want to build your career. That's why when I have career seminars or career growth coaching sessions with people, one of the most important things I ask them to do are two things. Write a career vision and two, write a letter to your future self 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. Because I want them to 
go and be in a situation whereby they think carefully. What do I really want as a career for my life? Mm. And in 10 years from now, two things will happen. That you are proud of yourself or who you have become or you are regretting. regretting. So when you write that letter, you're able to understand, okay, you start analyzing the future. Analyzing, oh, what will give me satisfaction? What, what will make me excellent? What will make me love life and be happy with what I do? So foresight is a, is a very important tool. Have foresight, have a career vision, and the will should be there. Yeah. And the will comes together with lifelong learning. Life, yeah. If you are not willing, you cannot learn. People don't write, like reading, don't like studying. You know, but on, on average, if on average, people who break barriers and succeed in life read on average 35 books a year. Yeah. I read on average 50, 55 books a year. Wow. So you see, it's intentional. So I always say that if you have made up your mind to be a success, then you also sign a long contract with studying, being a lifelong learner. That's a very important tool. All right. Thanks it's very much, Mr. Jove General for coming for this program, The Expert. Thank you so I believe much. next time you will not hesitate to come back and talk more about your various skills. Definitely. Okay, viewers of Seven News Television, we have come to the end of this program, The Experts. This program is a success due to the people working with me, like the cameraman, the editors, and the men inside the sacred room controlling the buttons for you to have the wonderful images you are seeing now. Don't go away. The expert is drawing the curtain close, but the programs in Seven News are still live and moving. Keep on watching Seven News. God bless you, as I love you all. <laughs>